Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to Smile to Jannah. A lot of people have been messaging me to make a video about what's going on in Kashmir. Before I begin, here's a quick background. Indian administered Kashmir is a Muslim majority area, yeah, which is under Indian rule. Now this mismatch of leadership and demographic has led to the people rebelling and wanting to join either Pakistan or being outright independent. Either way, being against the Indian rule. Now this has made the area very unstable, causing India to employ a whopping half a million troops. Yeah, making it one of the most militarized areas on the planet. Now India has repeatedly violated human rights, which is a very mild way of putting it and using extreme force to suppress any opposition. What's going on now? Now there's two incidents that we're going to focus on. The first incident, uh, this was an annual Hindu 45 day pilgrimage to a Himalayan cave shrine yeah and this was taking place. So India claimed that it received intelligence suggesting an attack on these pilgrimage routes and so asked all of the pilgrims and tourists to evacuate straight away. The second incident was the Indian army said it had foiled an attempt by Pakistani militants across the border of, of Pakistani Kashmir and Indian Kashmir, killing several attackers. Pakistan denies this and accuses India of attacking civilians across this borderline in an area called the Neelam Valley with cluster munitions, which is in violation of international law. Again, India denies this. Now in war, the first casualty is truth. Someone's clearly lying and using this to further their agenda. Now they know that the international community can't verify who it is and it's going to be India's word against Pakistani's word. So in the end it's going to come down to the strength of propaganda and the influence that the country has and that's naturally in the favour of India. One of the biggest terrorists we have to counter terrorism and to neutralize that terrorist. One terrorist has been neutralized. Terror threat. Some terrorists may have infiltrated. A terror attack from Pakistan. Those terrorists will then will need. Now let's deal with the suspicious acts which point towards a hostile takeover of some kind from India. Okay, now there's been terrorist attacks that happened in that area before, but consider the following. There's already half a million troops there, but an additional 10,000 have been sent. Mobile networks and the internet has been restricted, schools have been closed, curfew restrict, uh, restrictions have been added. So people are literally shut out from the outside world, from each other, local politicians are put under house arrest even if they're pro-India. Okay now let's look at the timing of all of this here. Yeah? Considering Pakistan is working with the US to resolve the conflict in Afghanistan, that could mean a problem for India as that would mean Pakistan would be more focused on Kashmir. Number two, you got Independence Day that's coming up. So in the light of Independence Day, those terrorists will then will need to be neutralized and ensure that this time every panchayat ghar in the valley will be celebrating Independence Day in a very big way. Some might say India is acting in self-defense, but the majority of the evidence says otherwise and points to India being the aggressor. Number one, India has refused third party mediation, even if it be with the US. To such a degree that Indians were furious when Trump gave the impression that Modi asked him for mediation. Number two, and this is the biggie, Article 370 has now been revoked. Yeah, and this is causing the most outrage. This was what people were worried about the most. Now, this was the condition with which Indian administered Kashmir agreed to join with India in the first place. Yeah, This article allowed Kashmir to have a degree of freedom and independence from India. But Hindu nationalists have been fighting against this for a very long time. The Prime Minister being a Hindu nationalist himself announced this too when he was running for leadership. So now he's just reenacting what he promised. Number three, Considering the area is majority Muslim, the best bet for India would be to change the demographic. 
yeah because it's more difficult trying to win those people over so there's two ways that they can do this firstly install illegal settlements like Israel's done in Palestine as hinted by the BJP leader and secondly to revoke article 35a and that's just a ticking time bomb article 35a prevents people from outside the state from buying land in the territory yeah now naturally when this is revoked this would get like an influx of rich indians literally buying out kashmir and that would inevitably lead it to be a part of india when these two things are revoked naturally there's going to be backlash from the people so that's you know you got all these troops there that are there to kind of suppress any outburst yeah with the curfews and you're not allowed to meet or organize any public rallies and the borders being tightened up between india and pakistan so pakistan won't be able to assist either so it does seem like a hostile takeover india is playing a very smart game it's not revealing too much it's putting its foundation in place so when this hostile takeover happens there's going to be very little resistance so in this month of the hijjah i do ask you guys to make dua for our brothers and sisters that are in kashmir if there's anything that i've missed out you guys got any more resources put them in the comments inshallah until next time assalamu alaikum